How's it going YouTube? This is your boy Chosen and today we are discussing a pretty controversial topic. Today we are discussing what multiple improvements a possible Naruto Shinobi Striker sequel needs to make that allows it to be a more enjoyable experience for everyone. Let's get to it. So as most of you don't know, Bandai Namco is participating in the summer digital event hosted by IGN. And it's no question that Bandai is going to reveal some major gaming news. High speculation is that it could be a new Naruto game. A game titled Battle Alliance was trademarked by Bandai Namco. I think two weeks ago. And the digital gaming event is to set place in June. A new Naruto game has to come out every year. Whether it's for mobile, Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox, it doesn't matter. There has not been any announcements yet on a new Naruto game title and knowing how the most recent Naruto game was a mobile game, it's no question that the next one will be a console game. Strikers just finished up their second season and by the release of this video, it'll be two days until the Momoshiki DLC and after that, nothing. I speculated last week that on the digital gaming event, Bandai will release a trailer or an announcement of the next Naruto console game whether that's a sequel to Strikers or that trademark Battle Alliance game. I'm very confident that something Naruto will feature in that event. Last year in June, it was Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. This year, it's probably going to be Naruto. I don't know, Battle Alliance? Who knows at this point? I know the title of this video is regarding Shinobi Strikers 2, and the reason I haven't touched on it yet is because I just need to clarify with everyone that just because I'm making this video doesn't mean I think we actually are getting a sequel. I've covered that multiple times, and if you want a further explanation, the video I left down is in the description. So in short, this video is pretty much me explaining to you guys what changes I would love to see if a sequel were to happen. Not at all saying it is. Now we can begin. And the first thing I personally would love to see handled better is balancing. Shinobi Strikers is very unbalanced. Now I know some people might not agree with this, but I think Hokage Naruto did balance up the game a little. In the month of March, the game was almost unplayable. With May's annoying water pillar, and I think that was the update where Demon Hunter got a boost as to where your first strike, right, the Demon Hunter slash you do, gives you health. And I could sit here and talk about all the issues with defense types, but that video would be like 20 minutes long. You don't got time for that, I don't have time for that. But the update Demon Hunter got might have been the dumbest ninjutsu buff I have ever seen. And I'm a beta player, so I have read and seen every update. This by far was the dumbest thing they could possibly do. Over time, Striker started off as an actual competitive online game that in my experience had no meta that couldn't be countered. Now it's a different story. The one thing I have seen within the community is people trying to bash the players that abuse certain jutsus, and as they are right to confront them about it, I gotta be real, it's more on the devs than them. It's not like the devs, you know, release these characters and then immediately fix the issues people have with them. It's literally, they rather buff the meta that's already being used by everyone, or barely nerf it. And more times it's them buffing the meta which encourages players who play in a toxic manner. As much as people like to praise Solio for improving the game over the year with such a small company, which they do deserve some credit for, there's a lot of issues that they have not resolved, even old ones to this day. And like I said, with most of the updates, they buff certain jutsus that pretty much encourages toxic players to abuse the meta. And when they do nerf certain ninjutsus, it's barely touched on. For example, Somebody explained to me why defense types can still feel. Back in the beta days of Strikers, the devs said that this game is team oriented. In Shinobi Strikers, there are four roles. Attack, range, defense, healer. What is the point of a healer if defense types can just heal themselves? How is that being team oriented? You can pretty much clear through two people as a defense type if you run the meta of meta builds. And like I said, to this day, it has still not been solved. Probably because they have less people now focusing on strikers since they are currently working on two big titles. But still, I know a lot of people didn't like Kokage Naruto's jutsus, but I think he made things more fair. Constant water pillar users, players hiding in the ground, abusing Demon Hunter. Naruto counters a lot of things and generally at times, forces these players to run other classes, which I give him praise for. So I for one am super glad Okage Naruto came out and I would have his juices work no other way. The next topic is matchmaking. And this pretty much continues off of what I was just talking about with balancing. The matchmaking in Strikers recently hasn't been bad in my experience. I've usually paired up with fair teammates going up against players of my level. And the games are kind of fun. So you're probably asking if the matchmaking is fine to you, why bring this up? Well, 
The matchmaking in Shinobi Strikers is pretty good now, again from my experience, because a lot more people are playing Shinobi Strikers. The homie Black Sage sent me a website that pretty much tells you how many people have played a certain game within a certain month, how many new players have joined within the month, and the total amount of people that have played that game since release date. And Shinobi Strikers, since March 12th to April 12th, has picked up 52,000, just wait, on PS4 alone. Xbox has picked up 140,000. Now I know that might seem like bullshit. The link to the website is in the description below if you want to see it for yourself. What you guys have to understand is that I'm not saying there's a consistent player base of 92,000 people playing every day. How this website tracks this player base is by trophies and even people who just touch the game for like 10 minutes and never played again. The game still appears in the trophy list with the date it was launched. So essentially this tracks people who've gotten at least one trophy within the month and new players who have literally just started the application. And in total, with Within the month of March 12th to April 12th, it has tracked 92,000 people playing worldwide. The crazy part about this is the numbers are still lower than what it actually is because it's not counting experienced players who don't get trophies. With this being said, don't expect the daily or weekly player base to be that high. Like I said, many of these people could just be people who've touched it for like 10 minutes and just said, nah, fuck this game, or even occasional players. Now, tying this into what I was talking about before, the only reason I'm enjoying the game right now, more than usual, is because there are a lot more people playing Strikers. Before, when it took longer than it usually did to get into a match, I'd find myself in games where it'd be me and three ranked ones against a team of gold four stacks running three healers and one attack type some some crap like that and even if i were to find a fair game where we're going up against the same four stack gold players they're all running at least two defense types or two healers or hell some games they'd run both and that's counting the competitive side and just regular quick match i understand that if people aren't playing the game the devs can't really do anything about it but the thing they can at least do that i feel like will make it more fair for players who don't have a team or even teams that don't like running healers is restrictions of roles i think this needs to be implemented in to the competitive side of strikers. A full rainbow team, so that's attack, range, defense, and healer, goes up against two healers and two defenses running the ultimate heal builds or super meta defense builds, more times they are going to have the disadvantage. And you can make the argument that maybe these teams need to force themselves to play two healers, but that's exactly what the game should not do. If I'm playing with a team that has no healers and we're going up against a team that has two, I literally feel the need to just close the application because what's the point? Not all of us like running healer. I have friends to play with, but not all of us do. And at one time, for a long time, I did not have anyone to play with. So in terms of competitive play, it was very frustrating to play these matches. The game needs to force players to run a full rainbow. That way you're not dealing with two water pillars or two players running demon hunter because not everyone likes playing against those or even using those jutsus. In quick match, I can see them allowing this because I mean it's quick match, who cares? But in terms of competitive play, I want to be able to rank up without feeling like I have to force myself to play a game mode just to get these rewards. If they're not going to properly balance their ninjutsus, if they're not going to enable voice chat, the least they can do for us solo players or even teams who do run rainbow is to restrict roles in competitive game events that actually make it competitive. The next thing is something I think we can all agree on and that's maps. Everyone and their mother who's played the game for a while now has complained about this so I won't go into detail but maps definitely need to be a thing. That's like one of the go-tos in team oriented online games like Shinobi Strikers. How they couldn't even make one map, one map, I don't know. I can't even tell you why they haven't, but if a sequel were to come, this needs to be focused on more. Different hubs. I mean, come on, the Leaf Village looks fine, but it'd be cool if when we choose what village we represent, we actually stick to that village as a hub. This could probably be talked about in another video, so I won't go into it now, but something like this could really work. And I think this would show a great improvement between the two games. Rio. Rio, 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 Rio. Probably one of the most useless virtual currency I have ever seen in a game. I have almost a million Rio and barely anything to spend it on. They tried giving it a purpose with an added feature that lets you change your clothing perks for a big price. But if you're a long time player like myself and have almost 1 million Rio, it's basically pocket change. If a sequel were to come out, I hope they implement more useful ways for us to spend our Rio because my currency is just going to keep going up as I play without a need to spend on anything. And the last topic I have for this video is game modes. First things first, take out barrier battle and replace it with something better. Combat, flag, base, they're all fine, but barrier is a game mode that is generally hated 
by a lot of people within the community. I mean, there's a reason why they don't add barrier into the competitive game events, right? With how big the Naruto universe is, I know for a fact that they can think of easy replacements. I mean, this hasn't been confirmed, but this game was clearly inspired by Overwatch. If you play Overwatch, then you can easily analyze their similarities. Looking at other games that are similar and applying some of these things that work to a sequel would be much appreciated. And that's all for this video. Remember guys, videos like these are personal opinions. Just because I say I want something to happen doesn't mean it's actually going to happen. If you feel indifference towards this video, that's fine. I'd love for you to tell me why down below. And with that said, thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.